I'm so glad that I'm able to be here at least through a video. It would have been a lot more fun to be there in person, but that's the way we do things right now, I guess. And I'm happy to be reading my book for you. You know, I'm a writer, but I'm also a reader. You might even know where this picture was taken, and I bet you've read about the cat in the hat the same way I have. Sometimes I actually learn even from reading my own books. A while ago, American Girl asked me to write some stories for their doll of the year. And Lainey was somebody who really loved the earth. And she wanted to learn how to, she wanted to learn how to save monarch butterflies that used to look like this. And she discovered that we can all do things for bees and birds and butterflies right in our own backyards. And so when I moved to Portland, Oregon, I actually learned something from Lainey, the character that I made up. I turned my own backyard into a good place for bees and birds and butterflies. I wrote this novel after I moved to Portland and I put some of what I learned into this book. For example, I knew a lot by then about Ethiopian adoption because I grew up in Ethiopia and I put that into my book. I also knew by then about Portland Bridges. My brother's classroom even made up a song about Portland Bridges for me so that I could put it in my book. And I put Backyard Habitat in my book. You can probably see the bees there on the spine of the book. I wrote about cool things that are in my yard like bees and icky things that are in my yard like slugs. Well, there's something else about Backyard Habitat and that's that I fell in love with my compost and the way compost grows really great flowers. That led me to understand the Portland Zoo because the Portland Zoo has compost available. And that's how I came to write, what do they do with all that poo? You know, it's really an important question what to do with poo. If we want to save the earth, we've got to figure it out. And my book is traveling around the world. This is the way it looks in South Korea, for example. So I hope kids all over the earth are learning about poo and what to do with it. I'm reading this with permission from Simon & Schuster. And it, you can see some of the awards that it has gotten for being a good science book because nothing is made up in this book. I dedicated it to my students from Vermont College because they helped me get a lot of the ideas for writing this. At zoo after zoo, the animals chew and then they poo. Now, when you read the book for yourself, you can see what poo is mostly made up of, but I won't read that part for you today. Giraffe poop looks like marbles as it drops a long, long way. Panda poo is full of pam bamboo. Pandas eat and poop all day. You know, one of the reasons why giraffe poo is so small is that giraffes actually have four stomachs, believe it or not. A hippo sprays a shower with its flipping, flapping tail. To weigh a day of an elephant's poo, you need a sturdy scale. Rhinos can communicate through piles and piles of scat. A lion sometimes buries poo, like any other cat. I like the way the illustrator put Bob was here on that rhino scat. Sloths creep down from trees to poop, but only once a week. A penguin shoots its poo out in a fishy smelling streak. When I got a chance to see the illustrations for the first time, I was worried about this illustration because I was the one that had to say if this book was accurate. And when I studied penguins, I looked at the scientists that were looking at penguin poo and it looked like this, penguins on land. So I had to write to a zookeeper and find out if it was accurate for the water. Luckily, it turns out it was. A wombat's poo is cube shaped, so it isn't very roly. Some snakes poop only once a year. They digest their food slowly. You know, when I was writing this book, scientists were trying to figure out how a wombat's body can create poo that way. 
And this is an example of a science research assistant who's now written about how they figured out about wombats and poo. Hyenas crunch up lots of bones. That's why their poop is white. Bat poo has undigested bugs. Bats poop all day and night. When I wrote this book, I said bats do their poo at night because I knew that bats were active at night. I was lucky that one of the editors caught that problem. It turns out that bats poop all day and night. Once we were reviewing that, something else happened because there was a part of the book that I had put in when I was writing it that I had to take out. It said this, some zoos have cubs that were born in a litter. Zookeepers sprinkle the cubs food with glitter. The poo comes out red, blue, or silvery hues, helping keepers keep track just whose poo is whose. I thought that was really cool, but my editor didn't think it would fit. Luckily, when I was writing about the bats, I found out that bats, at least some kinds of bats, eat a bug that has a really sparkly shell, and the shell doesn't all get digested. So I got to have sparkly poo in my book after all. And you can see that if you check this book out of the library, you can read all about the bats and their poo. So what do zoos do with all of that poo? They sweep it and hose it and toss it each day. A lot goes in dumpsters to be trucked away. Wow, so much zoo poo has to go to the landfill in a lot of places. You know, a zoo might have to deal with more than 5,000 pounds of poop each day. And that's bad when it all goes in the landfill. That's why we want to try to find other things to do with the poo. They send some to vets and to scientists too. Then zoo poop is studied to help out the, the, the zoo. They pile some in towers and toss it with rakes. It soon will be compost for gardeners to take. Okay, you already know, this is my favorite part. It's what made me even want to write about zoo poo because I love compost and I really love this page. First worms like to munch it. Their poop is so teeny. Then worm poop plus zoo poop grows perfect zucchini. You know, in, in England, there's another version of this book. And in England, they don't call it zucchini. So this is how it reads in England. First worms like to munch it. And then we're all set for worm poop plus zoo poop grows perfect courgettes. So this is a very cool thing that I like to read about. At the Seattle Woodlawn Park Zoo, they sell worm dew, and it's made from zoo dew compost and zoo coffee grounds. And a keeper at the zoo said, it's been pooped once by exotic herbivores and pooped again by compost loving worms. I really love those worms. They even make paper from elephant poo. Zoo poo paper's pretty, not smelly. It's true. And this is some paper that if I was there in person, I would be passing around so that you could smell it and see this paper made from elephant poo and see that it isn't smelly. Whoa, look, yikes, duck. That monkey at the zoo just threw its poo at you. I don't know if you've ever been to the zoo and had a monkey throw poo. It turns out that the scientists have been studying that too. They studied chimpanzees and they found out that the strongest, smartest chimpanzees threw the most poo. So we're really not sure why they do it, but it seems to be something useful in a primate's life. You know what I really hope about my book? I hope you'll check it out from the library so that you can read all of those zoo poo facts for yourself because I just told you about a few of them. And I hope that maybe you'll visit the, the zoo and you'll ask about what they do with their poo and you'll find out about the compost. You know, we all have to clean up the poo from our own animals. And this is actually a person who calls herself the poo fairy. 
she's in another state and she goes to a public place where people sometimes don't clean up after their animals and she cleans up all the poo. So that's something else we could do after reading this book. Maybe we could all become poo fairies and clean up other people's dog or cat poo. And of course, one thing I really hope you do is get excited about worms because they are such an important part of making the soil healthy and growing good plants that will help out birds and bees and butterflies. There's classrooms and libraries all over the country that have been learning about this book and learning about nonfiction and learning what can they do with poo. I hope the book makes you laugh and I also hope maybe that you think about sharing it because that's one one of the most fun things to do with books. Finally, on the end papers, a lot of kids have told me that they like looking at what the illustrator did and figuring out what kind of poo is on the end papers. So enjoy my book, enjoy the library, and thanks for being a book lover. Bye.